Yu Tiao Man is one of Singapore's biggest manufacturers of frozen yu tiao, or fried dough sticks. The business began as a hawker stall in the 1940s. It supplies yu tiao to hotels, restaurants, and other businesses. Since the pandemic, it's also expanded to selling directly to consumers. Yu tiao requires a few ingredients like bakery, we require flour, we require water and oil. Uh, this in almost 50% of our cost comes from oil. So this impact of this uh, oil uh, news has a, has a great impact on what the outcome of our cost is. Indonesia's palm oil export ban in April is the latest in the series of shocks to the global food supply chain. Around the world, prices of edible oil had already been on an uptrend due to bad harvests and rising demand for biofuels. Russia's invasion of Ukraine spiked prices further. The two countries supply about half of the world's sunflower oil. Palm oil is the most widely used edible oil in the world, and Indonesia is its biggest supplier. The government said the ban was to bring down rising oil prices at home. We do have uh other substitutes, but it's, it's not so easy just to jump one to another because the others also like soya bean oil and sunflower oil and also rapeseed oil. They are facing adverse weather issues. For alternative suppliers, Malaysia is the next, next biggest, uh, so you know, so much of the demand has got filtered through. But obviously, I don't think uh, Malaysia can make up for the complete shortfall. So you would see that there would be some excess demand, which is essentially uh, driven up prices. Other edible oils are also seeing supply crunches. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, prices of vegetable oils rose over 23% in March alone. Demand for alternative oils, so essentially soya bean oil, for example, has gone up. So the demand from, for soya bean from countries like the US and Brazil in just five months has increased by over a third. Apart from that, uh, rapeseed oil is the other alternative. Uh, what India has again done is that it's, it might be heading into a, uh, you know, a record harvest this year, uh, which means domestic crushers will have sufficient supply. Uh, and in fact, they might have some buffer, which perhaps they can make for some shortfall. But nonetheless, I think net net what you've seen is that uh, it is not possible to make for the entire shortfall uh, from palm oil per se. As far as the palm oil is concerned, it's also a biofuel. So that actually restricted the amount of oil, edible oil that is available for the consumer. The export ban has sparked fears of worsening food price inflation around the world. It's also raised questions about the workings of the globalised supply chain. What is tell us that something is not right? Uh, if the globalisation had been working as before the COVID-19, uh, we wouldn't have much of these issues because the Indonesian palm oil ban was... To, uh, it came on, but there were warning signs before that. But what it tells us that it needs a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of, I wouldn't say a major overhaul that would be too drastic, but a rethink of how corporates source their raw materials and other manufacturing. In Singapore, Yu Man's CEO shares the company's strategies for taking the heat off rising oil prices. I mean, we've, when during COVID started, we, we already knew that there will be some supply shocks during COVID and after its recovery. These shocks happen when the market cannot react immediately to certain changes. And th these are outliers. Uh, yeah. we, we're always trying to predict these outliers to create and defend the company. Um, during this period, we already had secured contracts with uh, suppliers. Uh, we have uh, long-term contracts with them at a certain price. That helps us to create some stability in our businesses. According to the World Bank, over 35 countries have slapped bans on food exports. It warns that this could create a new global food crisis. 
stress could come from anywhere, particularly the commodities where domestically the producers are uh, face sh shortage in supplies and that has driven up local uh, prices. At this point, because inflation is such a big issue for many of the countries, so commodities in general uh, would be a space to space to watch quite closely, especially where there is concentration um, risk on particular suppliers. Indonesia's export ban took effect on the 28th of April, and the government says that it will be in effect until prices come down. Some market watchers believe that the ban could be short-lived. That because uh, Indonesia doesn't consume uh, all of the oil that it, uh, edible oil, palm oil that it produces, uh, I would think this would, this ban might be temporary in nature. Uh, and also, uh, you know, thereafter, in a couple of months, when their domestic supplies have been fulfilled, and they also want to bring the domestic prices down, and when that's fulfilled as well, uh, imports could resume.